are listening to the East Texas Banner right here at EastTexasBanner.com. We had the awesome privilege to sit down with uh, Dr. Richard Pham. Dr. Pham, I appreciate you taking time with me to no, sit down. No, thank you. Thank you very, very much for the opportunity to speak with the community. Absolutely. So, you were here for a while, you left, you come back. Tell us a little bit of the story. I actually have been here for a long time. Okay. So we started back in 1998 after residency, way okay. back when, and uh, I was recruited here out of residency from University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston to practice OB in family medicine. Back then it was with Clark Mattingly and Courtney Mattingly, okay. who were the original groundbreakers of Jasper Memorial Hospital. Nice. So I met with them after residency and was here for almost two decades. Very so, cool. Uh, if you look at, uh, most people know me from having been here for that long. Right. And if you look at the school rosters and birth certificates, you see my name on a lot of the kids <laughs> as the delivery physician. So sure. I've been very, very fortunate to be a part of many, many families here in Jasper. So it's been very exciting to come home. Right. So it's, it, it's whenever I first heard, you know, Dr. Pham is coming, it was, it was not like, well, Dr. Pham's coming. It was elated. Everybody, I mean, everybody that I talked to about you, you know, opening up a spot, you know, the whole nine yards. It was just excitement. And so, um, you know, obviously you guys have a new facility here on Milo Street. Yes. Okay. Um, is that operational as of today? Well, I'm going to go back to your first part. And okay. I, I am as excited as my patients are. So when we left, it was not an easy decision to leave Jasper, sure. leaving friends and families and all my patients behind. So now that I'm back, I've missed the community, I miss my patients, I miss the people here, and really this is my home here in Jasper. Right. So the Jasper Hospital District gave me the opportunity to become a community member again and to be able to serve my people, my, my patients again. So through them, they've opened both the Rayburn Clinic and also the Primary Care Pavilion, where we are now at, in this beautiful facility to allow, to allow me to be a part of the community and to service those people whom I miss tremendously. So I'm very excited. So we're back to serve the needs of our community and the people of Jasper and the surrounding area, of course. And there's plenty of people here that need help. Well, Primary Care, OB Care, has been um, has has always been a deficiency, and you look at any small town Texas. Every small town Texas is in dire need of sustaining health care because, as primary care, we're the foundation of all health care. You can't bring in specialists without us being here. Right. Partly because one, they need referrals, and then two, we need to send patients to them, and the patients need to have us help them work through who to be sent to. So as family medicine is the foundation, we're the ones that actually get patients to the specialists. You can't build a health system without the foundational primary care, and I'm eager to provide that. But just because I'm primary care doesn't mean that I can't handle the majority of issues. As a board certified family physician, I can handle most things very, very easily, acute things and chronic things. And you know that I've always had a keen interest in delivering babies. And I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, that one day we'll be able to provide that again here in Jasper. That would be awesome. That would be super awesome. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. So right now, this is this is like this is almost like a complete new beginning for you guys. It is. It is. I mean, so that's, you know, walk me through a little bit of that. Because I know you guys have been having construction going on. We've seen that we've seen the contractors and whatnot getting everything prepared. You know, it's just been it's been cool to watch and be a part of but you know for you guys i mean it, it's like it's almost like you know it's almost like being an airplane completely revved up but you're still tied a little bit that's you right know? we took that took it to the ground yeah exactly. absolutely no we've been very impatient to get the ball rolling the jasper hospital district has taken on a major responsibility and a big challenge in opening these clinics it's not easy to open clinics and actually get them started and get them up and going and staff them and run them it is a major endeavor. Okay. So kudos to the leadership at the Jasper Hospital District for their bravery and their courage, honestly, and their dedication because there are a lot of hiccups that can happen along the way. 
So we've been waiting for these two buildings to take to take shape and form, and we have been eager to get our doors open, only because patients have been in dire need of assistance. And my patients are coming back, and I'm happy to see all the new patients that are coming in. Small town doesn't mean small town medicine. Right. Small town means that there are fewer access because you have to drive for primary care, specialty care. But Jasper is big enough and deserves a good foundational primary care system that then can bring in the specialists. And then there's no need for us to be driving an hour, an hour and a half for care that should be rendered here locally. Sure. So the hospital district's goal, and which is my goal, is to really be able to take care of the babies, the parents, the siblings, the grandparents, and possibly even the pregnant moms that need care here locally. So yes, there's a need to see specialty care, but very, very, most of the time, we take care of most problems here. Very cool. So if somebody's out there and they're dealing with, what, what are some things, you know, because when you say primary care, okay, uh, for the people who don't know what that is, right? I know, yes. Explain that just a little bit. Well, primary care refers to the health of everybody as the foundation, which includes mental health, physical health, emotional health, and that truly involves the access to for acute problems, things that you need on a daily basis, okay. sore throats, coughs, colds, bronchitis, UTIs. But then again, primary care also extends to caring for most common problems hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, thyroid disease, uh, venous insufficiency, uh, even coronary disease can be considered primary care, gynecological problems, pediatric problems. So primary care is a big umbrella. It is when we face unique circumstances or patients have unique problems that we can't handle because of facility, because of resources, then we bump them up to the specialty care. But primary care includes vaccinations, well visits, things to keep you healthy. And I'm really big not only on the foundational primary care, but I'm big on well-being and wellness. Because the things that I do with my patients here in the office is to help steer, educate, and guide. It's what you all do, what patients do outside of the clinic, day in, day out, that really determines your health. So if I can help you be healthier, mm -hmm. long term, you will be healthier. So okay. that's primary care. Okay, so I'm gonna ask this as a selfish question. If, say you have, I don't know if I'm considered middle aged at this point, I'm 47, but right in that world, if you have a guy like me yes, who's, who's a construction worker, you know, this, this is the world I come from. A lot of times our health is, um, how would you put it, uh, on the back burner? Yes, sir. Until something breaks. That's right. Right? Um, why, why do you think that is? With guys, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I don't know because I, I know this. You know, for me, I mean, I've got a wife and kids and I make sure they're taken care of anytime something goes down. But it's almost like, you know, us hard-headed men are just like, I don't want to go to the doctor. <laughs> you know, I mean, what, what's been your experience? Well, I will tell you, men tend to not be the ones making decisions about health care. Usually the moms and the wives do, okay. especially about the kids. But men's health has been, as many studies that have been done on men in the past, mm -hmm. men's health of late, over the past decade, decade and a half, have really taken, has really taken a backseat. We, don't, we hear a lot about the needs of children and women, but really the focus on men's well-being has not been that strong. Sure. And for most men, we are focused on providing for our families and their needs come first, the children's needs come first, and we're built and cultured as providers and as the main primary breadwinner. And so sure. we don't really spend a lot of time on ourselves. And in doing that, we kind of fall into habits. You know, we don't handle stress well. We don't take enough time for ourselves. We don't focus on our diet. We don't focus on our sleep. We don't focus on our weight. We don't focus on our mental well-being. And everybody needs to focus on that. So men are just as important as women in terms of healthcare. We have bodies. We have we're all human beings. Same genome essentially. And so the same diseases that affect men and women can occur. So, men need to care of themselves.
because they're so used to taking care of other people. And it's true for women also. There are women who take care of other people and don't take sure. care of themselves. And so happiness comes from the ability to be healthy and to be happy yourself and then to care for those around you, taking that health and that happiness and expanding upon that to other people. So I, I, I am big on the needs of men. I really am. Only because I have dealt with women and, of course, children all my life. But I see over the past 10 years that there has been this turn where men are being neglected and men are suffering in silence. And um, there's no need for that. Yeah. A problem that is maintained is easier to fix than a, thing, than a problem that's broken that has been neglected. Sure. So we should not neglect our bodies and our health. So primary care focuses on prevention. We want to prevent things before they break. Nobody drives a car until the tires fall off. Sure. No one drives a car until the engine burns up. You just, it's a big investment. And our bodies are so much more complicated than a car would ever be. You never want to wait until something is broken to that degree before you seek attention. So if there are men out there and they're listening, they just need to set up a, a checkup, yeah, come yes. in and get checked up. That's right. You know, I mean, at, at least at least let you guys look under the hood and figure out what's going on. That's exactly right. Do a, do a diagnostic because sure. you may be misfiring, you may have dirty oil, you may need a transmission fluid flush. Sure. So labs, we can't see your innards. We don't have x-ray vision. Right. So even though you may feel well, systems may not be functioning well. So the, you know, think, I, I tell people all the time, our machinery is super complicated. You know, you can't expect that machinery to work at its optimum unless you keep it going and keep it tuned up. So if my goal is not to make you 20. My goal is not to make you 20. <laughs> it's not feasible. But my goal is to make you at your age optimal. Right. So whatever age you're at, whatever problems you bring in, I want to make those problems optimized and the best you could possibly be. So when you're 50, I want you to be at your, your best. When you turn 55, or be your best. And so there are things along the way that you need to get done. Colonoscopies, studies that get done, labs get done, cholesterol. Oh my gosh. I will tell you that the in America, we have been able to allow people to live longer. Not because we've gotten better at heart transplants, cancer surgery, cancer treatment, any of those. We have been able to add years to people's lives because we have been able to control blood pressure. So people live with high blood pressure all the time. We've been able to control diabetes. People walk around with high sugar. People with diabetics who don't control their diabetes. We have people who neglect their diabetes because of cost and those kind of things. And the other factor that has given people longevity is controlling cholesterol. And no one knows their cholesterol unless they check it. Think about their average American diet. How many french fries have you had this past week? How many pizzas have we eaten? Sure. So those diet, we can't... The, our machinery cannot function when we give it bad fuel. So, so good fuel is important, but maintenance is pivotal. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about children right yes, fast. Sir. So what are some of the things that are specific to children that you guys are going to be providing here? Oh, I love kids. So I love the young ones. I love the, the challenges of the, the preteen years and the teenagers. Obviously, each age group provides its own challenges. We'll be able to provide vaccinations once we get signed up with Texas Vaccines for Children. So vaccinations for our children and also private vaccinations, we're planning to give those too. We do all low child examinations and a lot of patients come to me with issues, with behavior issues for their pediatric uh, bedwetting issues. So in terms of pediatrics, we can handle, again, most things. There are unique diseases that really require a specialist. My goal is not to supplant or replace a specialist. My goal is to make take care of patients and make it easier on the family. But at some point, when it surpasses my abilities, they need to see the specialist. True. So a lot of parents come wanting uh, but kids go through developmental phases and some things are normal, some things are not. So my goal is also to educate and to help parents understand what can be expected. So education to me is also very important. The more you know, the less worried you'll be and the more informed you'll be in making your decisions. No doubt. And so so really from, from the standpoint of you guys being an on-ramp to specialists if need be. Yeah, absolutely. So your objective is to do what you can here. But once you kind of reach a threshold, you you guys are the referral point 
for specialists wherever wherever you have your specialists. No, absolutely. You know. But but recognize that the majority of issues that come to us we can handle pretty easily. Yeah. So we're not just a referral center. Yeah, sure. So so we want to be able to provide care locally so that patients don't have to go out of town or drive an hour, two hours, three hours to Houston. Um, so that we can take care of the majority of issues. But we're not we're not interested in taking care of things that are beyond our scope of practice. Right, right, right. Is there anything that you would like to put out to the public, anything at all that you'd like to put out to the public just to let them know, hey, we're here, we want to serve, we're available? I, I, I am so excited to be back in Jasper. And my philosophy in medicine has always been to educate and to allow patients to own their health. I want patients to understand that in partnership, this is a partnership between me and them. And together, we want to optimize their health. I can't make them perfect, but I'll get them as healthy as they can, given the things that they bring to me. They need to come in the way they are. They need to come in with their medications. Give me the chance to optimize their medications. I am very, very conscientious of costs of medicine. I am not going to give medications they can't afford. My parents came from very humble backgrounds. My parents... You know, we had nothing growing up, okay. so I understand the economics of medicine. So I think that as a physician, I'm pretty down to earth, and I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty easy to talk to, and pretty easy. I understand people with situations pretty well. So come in as you are. Allow me to help you. I'm going to be your neighbor. I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to be your doctor. But more importantly, I'm going to be able to help you, the patient, move their health to the best possible given any circumstances. So I'm excited to be back, I really am. I think that's one of the interesting parts to me is that when you make the statement, as a doctor, I want to partner with you. Yes, sir. That's hard to find, bro. Sometimes when you go to a doctor, present company excluded, it feels kind of top down yes, type of right. conversation. I, I realize you guys are brilliant, <laughs> but I, I don't want to take my ailment and also take my uh, insecurities heightened when I leave. That's you know right. what I mean? That's and right. so you, t you saying that's a big thing to me because the partnership is where this thing matters. That's right. The partnership, but it's also the kind of partnership you have. So yes, partner with me, but I want to make sure that I fully explain things to you, that you understand the goals and that you embrace the plans. Sure. Because it's not my plan, it's our plan. Because you're going to have to execute the plans when you leave here. You're going to have to do the things that you agree to. So it does me no good when I tell you to do something and you don't do it. It does me a lot better when we agree to the plan that may not be the best plan, but a plan that works for you. So each patient will come up with a different plan because the plan has to be tailored for you. It has to work for you. Sure. It's your health, and I want to be a partner in that. That's awesome. That's awesome. You guys are located right here on Milam. Yes, sir. Okay, and what's the address again? So it's 227 East Milam. We're literally next to the old Southside Bank building. Okay. As a matter of fact, we'll have a lab next to us, CPO lab. There'll be a huge lab next to us. They're moving next door. And then we plan to expand further. We'll hopefully get a mid-level who speaks full Spanish okay. um, here. And then we have the upstairs. We can actually house specialty uh, services, or we may even expand to additional primary care physicians. Very cool. I'm very excited. The Jasper Hospital District has lots of plans, and I'm very, very excited to be a part of that plan. Not for anything other than to serve the needs of our community. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Dr. Pham, I appreciate you Thank taking you time. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Thank you absolutely. for the opportunity. Absolutely.